Hi, I'm Ting Wing and I'm with the Science Communication Lab. We just got done filming our SYR series or Share Your Research and we're here today to talk to Wang. Wang, could you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Wang. I'm a fifth year PhD student in Johns Hopkins University. Um, I come from China and now my research is about computational regulatory genomics which is applying mathematic and uh, statistical tools to understand biological data and build models to um, understand the mechanisms in biology. How did you get interested in this intersection of math and biology? So I've always been interested in quantitative science and especially mathematics. And, but then I figured out I'm not smart enough to be a mathematician so I got into, interested in um, things like physics, chemistry, including biology. And there's just, there are just so many unanswered questions in biology right now. So it became very natural for me to combine uh, those two things together uh, to make new discoveries. What kinds of questions are you curious about? So I'm uh, particularly fascinated by DNA. So DNA, as you all know, is the most essential genetic material. And there's just so rich information in our DNA. So for example, for us as human, there are three billion bases in each of us, uh, in each of uh, our cells. And we have uh, over 20K uh, genes. So there must be a complicated machinery that ensures everything is going smoothly inside this tiny little nucleus to make sure all the genes are being properly turned on or turned off at the right timing. And, but how it is done, right? This is a super complicated process and we're in the middle of uh, the process to figure it out. You're talking a little bit about um, the different types of DNA and you would mentioned before when we were talking that you also think that there's an interesting difference about the genetic information in different cells. What's curious to you about that? So this has been a long standing question in biology. As you all know, we are multi-cell organisms. There are not, not millions, but over billions of cells in each of, in each of our human body. But all of those cells are coming from one single zygote, which means that each of those cells in our body has nearly identical genetic information. But there are over 200 cell types. I mean, if you look at a skin cell, it looks just so different from a blood cell or a muscle cell, or maybe a bone cell, in terms of either their shape, their function, or the, gene expression, or the gene expression profile of them. So how did, the question I'm interested in is how did the same genetic information in each cell generates uh, all those different cell types? And the, the answer we think is called epigenetics. This is something going on on top of DNA. So the DNA are composed of those all those bases A, D, C, G, and those information are consistent across cells. But there could be all those different types of modifications on the chromatin that determines cell type specific gene expression. For example, there could be methylation on those bases. There could be modifications on the histone protein, which DNA wraps around. Um, and there could also be the 3D interaction um, between, distal, between distant DNA elements, um, which is what I talked about in my SYR video. Yeah. And what motivated you to get into science and work on DNA? I think it's just uh, such a fascinating field uh, that to figure out how DNA information is being encoded and decoded, right? Because ultimately, all of our behavior, all of our appearance, what we're doing right now uh, to this world is all determined or partially determined by uh, our DNA, right? And, and of course, there's definitely interaction between uh, the genetic material, between the environment. Um, but genetic material definitely, without any doubt, plays a major role in it. So um, the dream I have is like, 
if you really want to understand human beings, you have to study their DNA. And that is my initial motivation to study how DNA works and how RNAs are being transcribed and being regulated. So getting back to basics. Yeah, in interpreting. Yeah, absolutely. And... I'm definitely, yeah, I'm definitely uh, a reductionism, uh, support of reductionism to uh, get things to the very basic and to make them simpler to understand them. What is one thing that you want other people to know about being a scientist? I think being a scientist means that you are really, really lucky. That's just my own opinion because I think as a scientist, you are given the, you're given the chance or you're given the privilege to do things that can look less useful. You don't have to think about um, like how can I apply this to the real world in the very beginning of your research. For example, for me, I'm just interested in the information in DNA. I think that's the very, very most basic thing in my opinion. So I got interested in it. It's just, just like Albert Einstein got interested in time and light. And that's how he, uh, how he discovered the, the general relativity, right? Those are the things that we see every day. But just because we have seen them so many times, sometimes we just get used to it and ignore it and forgot that we actually don't understand them. You know, as we're, we're all living organisms, but we don't actually don't understand. They're 99% of ourselves are the things we don't understand. Yeah. So yeah, those are really, really basic questions. And when you ask me, how, um, is, is it useful to understand those questions? I mean, I don't know. And I mean, if, you, if I'm asked to write a grant, write a proposal about it, maybe I can definitely think of one or two real world applications. Uh, there could be millions of applications if those problems are being solved. But what's really motivating me at the very beginning to solve them is not the real world application. It's just because I'm interested in those um, mysteries of nature. And I think as scientists, um, we're, uh, we're given the chance to make discoveries that have uh, more long-lasting impacts. And I think that's, worth, that's what worth doing for my life. Thank you so much. It's so, been so nice to talk to you and hear your stories and the mysteries that excite you. I hope you all go and check out Wong's talk.